Well, thanks for joining us. We're looking at the hexagon pentagon merger and the Great Pyramid. These two polygons with uh, sides, five sides and six sides are uh, ancient in terms of their meaning. So what's their relationship with the Great Pyramid? Well, first of all, here's a picture of the hexagon and the pentagon uh, merged. But uh, Robert Grant drew this on, on his Instagram page uh, a number of months ago. And so I asked him, isn't that supposed to be closed over there? You know, that, uh, that circle is supposed to circumscribe the, the entire uh, Pentagon. And he thought it was just a construction error and that he could fix it. But as we were talking about, and I told him the importance of it, I sensed this would relate to the Great Pyramid. And so uh, I asked him if he'd do me a favor and, and, and unsolve that. And so he did. You can see that he closed it off. You can see the construction line, sort of the uh, flower of life and whatnot that he used to, uh, to close this off. But it wasn't easy. And as a matter of fact, when he first started, he said it actually doesn't close. Hmm, I tried for over an hour. And, and I instinctively, I thought that would have meaning in the way I was thinking about applying this to the Great Pyramid. I thought, it, you know, it is quite possible that it, that it, that it won't close. But uh, he worked harder at it. We talked a little bit. He asked me uh, about, you know, the touching the, the hexagon circle and whatnot. But he went back, as they say, to the drawing board. And there's the beautiful construction he came up with. So the, the pentagon and the hexagon do merge. And uh, of course, those are all fixed proportions there. And uh, we'll see what the meaning of that is in a bit. There's another uh, one that he drew and uh, still another one, more recent one. So if you follow him on Instagram, you'll be blessed with his sacred geometry work there. Okay, so we worked out the 5-6 merger. Uh, the dates on the screen are a little bit long. I was a little bit tardy in making this video, but uh, it was uh, actually on uh, May 6th that he and I worked out the 5-6 merger, you know, especially him. I just kind of pressed him on it. And so interesting, an interesting providence that uh, it was on 5-6 that we worked out the 5-6. Interesting. It seems often when you work with sacred geometry, those kind of providences happen. Okay, so that's the 5-6 merger, the pentagon and the hexagon. We'll talk more about its meaning in a bit, too. But now the Great Pyramid. So, you know, if you asked a bunch of fifth graders, hey, just, just show them the picture of the triangle. This is the Great Pyramid. Where should the door go? I don't think any of them, very many of them would offset it. I think most kids instinctively would put it in the center where the north-south axis line is there. But actually, the center the uh, on the 19th course the sh with the chevrons there, the original entrance to the Great Pyramid, is 24 feet to the east of that north-south line. It's 286 inches offset. And it's not just that door that's offset. All the passages in the Great Pyramid, the Queen's Chamber, you know, the King's Chamber, the Grand Gallery, all of them are offset. If you uh, moved the uh, the plane there, it would actually be like that. That would be the north-south. So we're, this is a uh, east view that we're looking at here you know, that's in front of the north view now. But I'm just showing you that all of these passages are in that same offset. And that seems a little bit odd. Now, uh, Manu uh, Sevzada and uh, Jean-Paul Beval have uh, put together a, a video in which they're kind of encouraging a new paradigm for great pyramid research. Instead of every man for himself, hey, we're going to put a bunch of this stuff out here about these Fibonacci numbers and how we think, you know, the, the thing was constructed. And let's all work together on this. So I really like the idea. Now, they say it was a second built, you know, with the Egyptian uh, second, which uh, maybe made it a little bit more granular than if there would have been a real fine-tuned, you know, micrometer used or something. But uh, I th so, so I think that uh, in conception, the Great Pyramid yields all these things, phi, pi, you know, all the incredible other constants that are found there, the mathematical relationships. But in practice, very many places, the measures don't hold out in the Great Pyramid itself. Like, for instance, it's often said 26 degrees, you know, 18 minutes is the, is the uh, slant on the incline. Well, we measured it, my team, when we were in there a few months ago, and it, it varies all over the place. So you can have the, the theory of these perfect angles and things, but in practice, you know, it doesn't work out that way. So case in point, I was working out in my garden. Uh, there's the yard, and I've got where that star is. I've got I had a birds, uh, bird feeder. And uh, I was right in the corner of my deck, and so I was getting a bunch of seeds on my deck. And plus, the squirrels were getting on it because it was right in the deck. So I decided I wanted to move it over there. So here's a plan of how I want to do it. I want to move it from there to there. You can measure the distance and everything. This is the, this is the theoretical. Okay, but when you actually get to doing it, there's the mess that was being made in the corner. So, you know, I moved it over here to the other side of the pond. Well, I had to, you know, get a foundation. I had to cut it to the right length. I had to dig a hole to put the foundation into. I had to get a sledge hammer to pound it in there. You know, I had to, I had to make sure I level it. I had to have the right screws. I had to have the right bit to put those screws in there. I had to have a hammer to tap the foundation into place. I had to build a stop for the uh, 
uh, the the uh, broom handle basically I was using to hold to hold this the feeder in there and so you know there's there's a lot that goes into getting those bird feeders up there but it has defeated the, the squirrels I'm so glad about that so you know the the actual building of something often and there from you know from our window we can look out and we can see birds feeding so that's cool now here Dr. Mark Lehner has a uh, this you know uh, perfectly scaled model of the Great Pyramid and the uh, Queen's Pyramids to the east of it there and so, you know, in practice, you know, everything's perfect. But when it actually gets down to measuring the, you know, the craftsmanship of the, craftsmanship of the workmen, it, it becomes a little bit different. So here's uh, the typical east view you often see to see the passages in the Great Pyramid. So there's the second. It's 5.5 uh, palms, an Egyptian measure, for every cubit of rise. So that is seen all over the Great Pyramid. If you are sort of, you know, going to build retro, retro build it as they do, that is the measure that is seen all over that the Egyptians used. Okay, so let's overlay. That's the Great Pyramid. We looked at the hexagon, pentagon merger. Now let's overlay them, okay? So there's, a, I, I drew this uh, Great Pyramid, so I, it is so hard to find in, in a book the rightly scaled, so I just did it myself. We've got the, uh, you know, the uh, half base of 11, the height of 14, and then I very meticulously measured that offset. I actually didn't measure where to put the entrance. I just drew something there in terms of up and down. But the, the actual displacement to the east is very accurate. So this is an accurate representation of the Great Pyramid. So you can see in the background there, I've got uh, Robert Grant's construction. So when you move that over and you match the uh, the circle, the corner of the circle where the Pentagon point hits, and then uh, the, the circle outside the uh, hexagon, you can see that the common side to the hexagon pentagon merger lines up almost exactly with the offset entrance to the great pyramid now this is kind of the hunch i had all along about the the merger of the hexagon and the pentagon which is a fixed you know ratio a fixed proportion and uh you know th the most important thing about the hexagon pentagon merger is that common side you have two different shapes but they both have the same length and a common side and probably the most interesting thing about the Great Pyramid is this offset. So the two offsets merge. So I took uh, the, the drawing of David Davidson where he was, you know, he's a great uh, drawer. He's one of the great, you know, stalwarts in uh, studying the Great Pyramid history. And so the same thing. I put, I put his offset picture here and it lines up with the Pentagon-Heptagon merger. It's like, uh, excuse me, the Hexagon-Pentagon merger. Okay. So, you know, a beautiful construction, uh, sacred geometry with ancient esoteric meaning, and that the offset created by that joint line defines the offset in the Great Pyramid. So, I've added this little interlude here because I realized that shape is the same shape as a coronavirus inhibitor that they're working with in the lab to try and make a vaccine. It's a complex chemical, but it's called compound four. Here's a picture of it, and you can see the hexagon pentagon merger. And so it seems like the Great Pyramid, so amazing in so many ways, could give us a hint into even solving this pandemic. Wow. All right, so what's the meaning here? Okay, I'm going to give you one, one little take on this, a glimpse into what I think is meant here. But first, let's look at it. So you can see the two entrances there, Alma Moon's, uh, entrance which every visitor goes into now where all the people are gathered there and then uh, there it's right there and then you can see at the 19th course the original entrance which has been closed by the Egyptian government for a long time so there's a uh, you know an elevation view you can see the forced tunnel uh, by Al Mamon and the original designers entrance there okay so I was given permission by the uh, director general of the pyramids to go up to that entrance and uh, the original entrance and take some pictures that you know they blow the whistle you're not supposed to go up there and you get in trouble you know if you, if you climb up there but uh, i had the permission so they're looking at there and uh, then i got permission from my guys after we had come out of the desert chasing the stars of orion down in the egyptian desert we came to the great pyramid now this is an unusual picture you won't usually see in 2014 i had special permission inside the great pyramid so this is going up the descending passage toward that entrance you know, uh, even people that get special permission, they often don't come up here. Okay, so there, and then that's a, a view you won't often see. That's from the inside of that closed door, you know, looking through the slats out at the 19th course. Okay, so that's the original door that's offset 24 feet to the east. Okay, so there it is. So, 
you know, there are theoretically two ways to enter the Great Pyramid. You can enter here, the door from the original designer. It seems to have this esoteric significance. Or you can enter through the intruder's door, forced hole by the will of man. Now, these two doors are symbolic. You know, in ancient Egypt, you've got these false doors. They're symbolic. So there's two symbolic doors, two ways you can enter. Okay? So you can enter by the pentagon hexagon merger door where there's a joint side and so in ancient esoteric meaning in joining the the uh, pentagon and the hexagon is the the merger of the microcosm and macrocosm in a sense you could say it represents the meaning of life the microcosm man how does he fit into his universe it's like the vitruvian man the, the square the circle you know the sun the moon the earth the whole thing what is man in his relationship to his universe the microcosm to the macrocosm and I think it's significant that they're joined. You must be one with them. If you have a philosophy that puts you apart or better or above below, you must, you must humble yourself. You must humble yourself. And when you enter that door, that offset door, you are going down. And it's a low ceiling. You are humbling yourself. It's not a fun door to enter, but it's the way to life. Find your place. Be connected to something bigger than yourself. Or, again, you know, you can enter the intruder's hole, which says more or less, I've got it together, I'm good, I don't need anything. All right, find your door. Thanks for watching, and uh, please stay with us. Thanks for watching. Please like the video, share with friends, and hit the subscribe button. Please comment below and let us know what else you'd like to see on AIP.